Why, hello everybody, and welcome back to more Dicing with Death, where Ryan might actually have been here, and I just had him muted and couldn't hear him trying to yell at me for a few minutes, so blame me for the, the delay. Yeah, hashtag blame Neil. Hashtag blame all Neil all the time, every day, all always. day. So here I am in the middle of this field. I just used my only real spell slot to, uh, frankly, just deep fry an orc. Um... <laughs> Yeah. But now I got nothing left to deal with these goblins, and this guy's this guy's all you know. He's on, he's on my case about it. So I'm I'm I take a moment and I turn around and I start to look back around to see if I can find any like hum, you know goblin tracks or anything, any sign of any trails of use. Yeah. Uh, like give like you patrolling this bridge. Do you have a tracking proficiency? Are you joking? No. I'm give just, me a I'm perception just a dude. check. I'm just a dude just looking a for some footprints. Can you cut a guy a break? <laughs> just a dude looking for some footprints. All right. D20 plus. Wow. So I, oh, my God. I roll really well. So you start <laughs> looking around and you're like, boom. Hey, what the fuck are these? And you notice in the sand down by where the creek is, down by where the little river is, uh, there are some very very obvious prints that kind of just like walk in the wet sand um, where the tide receded. <sighs> Loud run. Uh, yeah, over what's there, up? I think I see a trail. Do you, do you see that over there in the, in the, in the sand? Oh shit. I wouldn't even have noticed that. You yeah. got keen eyes there, buddy. Ah, uh, hmm, why don't you, do you see where it goes? Yeah, let's follow it. And I try and sort of back lead him from right behind him, uh, the way the trail goes. Okay. Every NPC you give me, I will make. I will make my your meat shield. Meat shield. <laughs> Until I introduce you to a wizard NPC who's more weak than you. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Uh, so you. We'll see. I can roll. I can roll a lot of ones on my hit dice. Just you wait and see. You guys follow this trail down the, along the edge of the creek for a while now. I don't think there are any water. Is there any water music I can play? No, no. But we can. Well, we're just gonna keep doing this then. Um. So you walk along this for uh, quite a ways, maybe uh, twenty minutes or so, until you see the path like turn off the 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 water, and head inland it goes like up onto the the ground and into the grass and gets lost immediately hmm inland so we're heading east from i'm looking at the, for any yes. of these do they have the map no, no, you, the, the, the creek was was heading let's let's see yeah, let's put the map on stream and discuss. i guess it's pretty far out huh the creek we're between Jaden was and heading Lincoln east west, west. so now you are headed south all right, so we're we're on the road south from Jaden to Lin Lin Linvort, and then you headed eastward along with the tracks. Okay, I'm sorry, not eastward, westward. There. You headed westward, westward with the tracks, and then headed south. Okay, and then we see that the tracks head east into the hills. Is that what you said? Back towards the trail, or further away from the trail? No, the the tracks then head southward um, into the into the hills. Yeah, sort of lose so them. it's like very soft hills, not big ones, like gentle rolling hills okay. very gentle so loud ron how many friends did you have it, it, it was two it was two it was morty and melissa morty and melissa both how many and how many goblins did it take to bring them down well uh, there was just the one but i know he had some friends around i, I could i could just feel it i could hear it you know you know, you know when you get in a, a tense situation, you can just like feel things and just know what's going on. Yeah, and I just knew there were more goblins around. I can, I can already see it. Ooh. You said there was a magic sword, right? Yeah, um, yeah, he had a magic sword. How do you know it was magic? Because it, it had fire all over it. Fire. He had a flaming magic sword. Yeah, we're sort of we're walking. I guess we're wandering south into the hills. We probably lost the trail by now. Mm -hmm. And we're just, I'm just trying to find a high point, I guess, to look out. Over okay, the give me a, a perception check. 
Perception is the best stat, in case you were wondering. That is why I made it my second highest stat besides int, even though my stat set was not that good. I'll still take a 12 in that in my perception. Yeah. Over 12 strength any day. Is that a 19? Is that your rule? It's a 19. I'm not going to see anything. Mmm, it is. The air is very fresh up here. Ah, yes. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Um, you don't notice anything, but Loud Run with you spots uh, kind of like one of the sides of these gentle hills. I mean, they're like 20 feet tall, but like 100 feet long, so they're very kind of shallow, gentle hills. Maybe like 130 feet long. No, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not 130. Like two or 300 feet long. They're, they're very gentle. They just kind of obstruct your line of sight to any people on the ground. Um, he comes over to where there's kind of like uh, some dig marks. or You didn't quite notice it, but um, he did. And there's, it looks to be like a section carved out of part of the hill. Interesting. I walk over. You walk over to what appears to be a cave entrance. Um, the front looks like it's had some excavation work done on it, but inside looks to be stone. I am an engineer. Can I guess at the origin of the stonework? Like, does it look... It looks natural. And Oh, natural stonework. Hmm. Whew. Uh, yeah, you can go first if you like, and I start sparking up my flint and steel and light my, um, my lantern. I have no torches left because they both caught fire. So that's a bummer. You have no torches? I had two, and I set them both on grease fires. Okay. Grease as in the spell. Uh, I'm just looking. Does for... he seem inclined to dive yeah. into the cave? He's a little first. nervous, but he will go first if you prod him. I do have the far end of my quarterstaff sharpened into a point. Do you, are you gonna prod him with that? No, <laughs> no. Come on, it's in here somewhere. Oh damn it, it's not. Wait, there it is. There it is. And I stay about ten feet behind him, so he has about a foot, fifteen foot light in front of him. Okay. How I look for signs of use. Like could it I mean There's a difference between a cave that's used by 3 or 4 goblins versus a cave that's used by 100 goblins. So standing I guess outside. this is a, I guess this is why you would cast that wild magic spell that no one ever memorizes. Um Harung's guess. Mhm. Mm but you know, just using my natural intuition. Like, do I see tons of footprints, goblin shit? Uh, you look about Dead. the entrance to the cave, and you see a Discarded bunch of bone. what... There are a bunch of tracks, but you can't tell them apart from one another very well. Mm -hmm. um, so you have no idea how many or what type of tracks, but you see a bunch of them going in and out. Well, let's... Uh, let's have ourselves a, a gander inside, shall we? All right. Lantern sort of lit, you... Shake my lantern in the forward direction. <laughs> you let Loud Run go at first. Uh, what I, what my, this character really needs, and what he will definitely get at a higher level, is an automaton. Just a golem or some something. Some meat shield <laughs> that will lead the way. You are... And I will look one up as soon as I am a much higher level wizard. You're a... a uh, what do you call it? A, a proficient engineer. So yeah. you kind of look around this cave and you're like, you know what? This looks like a lava tube, which is strange because there's no volcanoes around or even large mountains or even mountains of any kind. It doesn't look fresh or anything, does it? No, it looks like a very, very old... I mean, it looks like a stone lava right, So I'm not worried about getting overrun by lava, but I am thinking that this is a peculiar... Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you, you continue okay. to follow through yeah. it, and it very quickly starts to go down, and you notice there are areas where people have chipped away the stone to make... A staircase where otherwise this hill would be just too steep um and the kid with you looks back at you and goes are, are you sure you want to go down maybe you should go first so that there's more light these are your friends son if you want to if you want to go chasing after him you're leading the way well give me the give me the light then he says reaching for your staff <clears throat> uh, what's the floor made out of stone 
All right. Um, I sort of prop my quarterstaff in my crotch, and I detach the lantern from the end of my quarterstaff. Okay. And you I hand, hand him to him. Lantern uh, he takes it and kind of looks at your quarterstaff, and then pulls his knife out of his pocket, uh, out of his uh, waistband. My knife proceeds. out of his waistband. Yeah. As you go descend, it goes down 10 feet, 20 feet, 30, 40 feet. Around there, it starts to get a little bit chilly. Um, it goes down another 20 feet further. So you're now, you're guessing, probably like 60 feet underground, and it seems to be in a big spiral, um, how the lava tube is forming. This, and this is all still a natural... Natural cave. Cavern, yeah. at least from the looks of it. Mm -hmm. but it's, I mean, it's... Um, and you start to see ice forming on the sides and on the floor, the and the fuck? footing gets really slippery. I rub my slippery. feet or my fingers along the, along the ice on the wall. I'm mm -hmm. probably like, is, this is real. What yeah, yeah. Uh, you get a little bit lower, and I need a perception check from you, please. Yeah. Um. 31. Oh, I'm on the ball. You hear As... the sound of chatter, of like loud flapping gums. That's kind of. Blah, blah, blah. 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 Blah, blah, Um, the um, although I I, I think, stop uh, you stop loud. loud run and I'm thinking there's not I don't have a whole lot of ways to deal with goblins this could get dicey this is not how I'm gonna die go on go on let's but be be quiet be careful. Keep your ears to the stone. Is that the way you do it? Maybe keep the ears away from the stone? Anyways. Um, you can carry on, down. Run. Carry on. And uh, eventually the, the jibber jabber kind of goes. Blah, blah, blah. I'm ready to run as fast as I can the other direction as soon as, as, soon as shit hits the fan. <laughs> um, it. It gets really quiet all of a sudden. There's no, there's nowhere to get surrounded, right? This is just a passage. It's a single, just like tube that keeps going down. Yeah. Um, but the goblins, the the goblinoid noises seem to have stopped. They heard us. You ready to fight some goblins, Loud Run? Ah, <sighs> uh, I think so. <laughs> um, and pretty soon. You, I mean, you continue, you've stopped there, you're, you're like holding, trying to hear something, listen for things, and there's a twang, followed by a whoop, as a goblin arrow crashes into the wall beside you. Uh, run, run, forward, charge, get him! And I just like push. Roll <laughs> initiative. Forward. Uh, let's let's hope there's only a couple goblins down here, and we get some reinforcements quick, cause this this could get bad. Well, gosh, Ooh, I can roll the perceptions, but those initiative rolls are not in my. So favorite. loud run goes, and he starts to run uh, down the staircase as quickly as possible, giving a kind of a war cry as he runs. <laughs> Fuck and... yeah, loud run. He goes about 30 feet down, kind of this weird slope. And all of a sudden, the light comes into where these goblins are. And they're shielding their eyes against it. Kind of, can I see or do I just hear? You can and... see this. Okay. Um, and he swings his knife at a goblin. With do just it. a wild miss. How um, many goblins do I see? Just two. And then he takes the lantern in his offhand to swing it at it. <laughs> uh, which is even worse of a miss. And just kind of like... And he spins it's a well designed on his feet. lantern. It won't go out. Like it's got a slow release mechanism on the oil or something. I, like I got that. you. It's a, like yeah. a um it's a, a wick stuck into a thing of oil so it slowly burns on its like yeah, the, the oil gets sucked reaction up. pulls the oil up into the up into the wick so you can yeah. 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 Capillary action, that's totally it. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, two goblins, you say? Yes. All right. Did they go before I do with my instrument um, as well? No. Uh, actually, no, you go first on all counts. What do we think? Are the am I feeling lucky? Do I want to do I want to dice with death today? Of course, it's dicing with death. It's late night drinking dicing with death. It's D D and D. All right, all right. Uh, straight D twenty, no D &D modifier. D &D. Let's let's clog. Give me that. a straight D one hundred. That's not a spell. That's a that's a quarter staff right there. Smacking your goblin in the back of the head. I oh, I thought you were. I thought your dicing with death was Nahal's reckless dreamer. Oh, that'll. Oh, that'll come. No, but this one is just me knocking your your goblin the fuck out. Okay, well, hold on. First, I need you to give me a dexterity check to see if you can actually run down this ice cave without slipping. Oh no! Wait, what? I take it back. <laughs> Too late, man. Oh no! What? No, not okay. <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't know that was that was right. 13. I fall and you fall thing. on your butt and uh, give me slide? what you rolled above a 10. So you start sliding down this hill towards the goblins. I I'm take it back. No attack. I'll give up my attack if I can run back the other direction and leave Ladron to die. No, you can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, here's the thing. You are sliding towards these goblins. You can still make your attack and I'm un I will, in fact, give you a charging bonus. <laughs> Because I mean, you're sliding down these hills. Roll. I already rolled that d20. Right, right. Anyway. Um, so let's just add a charge to that. And that's a, it, so that's a 20 or a 14, which what? is a hit. But afterwards, you're going to end up sliding like into the the wall at the bottom of this little area. Do pretty I take hard. damage or do I just... Well, we're going to find out in a bit. But I you hit take, with your... If you I hit take with damage, your I die. You hit with your 14. Give me a damage roll. I'm a fragile wizard. Max damage. I'll take max damage. You crack the goblin in the skull, and he just goes <laughs> onto the ground. Give me a constitution check as you slam into the wall. Oh, wow. Uh, constitution. Mediocre, just like all of my stats. Oh, and I crit it. I, you, does that mean... Yeah, you brace yourself for the impact and crack into the wall, and you like... Ugh, 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 but you're okay. No damage and no stunned or anything like that. All right. And we roll initiative again. No, the goblin goes. Oh, you're right. Uh, he drops his short bow, rips his short sword, which is actually kind of a really big dagger. Really, It's kind of like halfway between a dagger and a short sword, out from his side and lurches at Loud Run with it. Um, and that is a miss. Now we roll initiative. Um, I'm going to re-roll because it didn't count when I rolled it, right? No, it totally counted. Okay. All the rules count for everything. I rolled a, twin, a 12. Okay. The goblin goes first, stabbing Loud Run again. Critically fumbles, but passes his save. Uh, Loud Run goes, goes to stab with a knife, miss, swings with the lantern, and crits the goblin with it. Is Loud gonna... Run seriously taking my lantern and critting goblins with it and stealing my experience points? That's my lantern, so I get the XP bonus, right? I don't think so. He's the one that scored the hit. Um, and then it is your turn. You can get to your feet. The ground is icy, but uh, you're not on a slope anymore. So can I get a handled. back attack? Yes. 14 is a hit. You crack into the goblin, the unarmored goblin. Does he, ha he has a weapon, though, right? Two damage? Yeah. Does that finish him off? That finishes and... him off. You hit him in the small of the back, and he topples forward. Um, loud run pants nervously um, and surveys the the two go unconscious goblins. <sighs> well, uh, and right. then he looks around and holds the lantern up, and you guys see two humans um, bound and gagged over in the corner, looking with wide eyes at what you've done. I look to the goblins' weapons. First and foremost, I think. One of them, uh, the and one that I you did not hit. I run is jumping towards his friends. Yeah, he starts moving towards his friends. One of them had a short sword and a short bow, and the other one, who you hit in the head before or hit in the back before he could do anything, had a short sword sheathed at his side. I take a look at both of the short swords. How did they? The first one is a little bit more of a dagger than a short sword. It's like long and pointy, kind of like a 
I don't know, someone's, like, it would be a short sword for a goblin, but it would be like a dagger for um, an orc, or like a dagger for a bugbear, you know? <laughs> a dagger for a bugbear, okay. Yeah. Um, so you're saying it's D4 damage? I'm saying it's D5 damage, it's halfway between D5 a short sword damage. and a dagger. Yeah. No weapon in the in the history of D&D &D does D5 damage. Except for rat cleaver, rat. Anyway, um, I think I have. Am I logged into Twitch? I'm logged into Twitch. Oh, oh, do it. Oh, I did oh, it. I did, a rat, I did, did a rat cleaver. I did, did it. Rat. Um, all right. So uh, the other one, though, it, the the sheath is this nice, actually, um, some sort of meta metal. You look at it, and you can't quite tell in this crappy light if it's uh, iron or silver, but it's some it's sort of grayish, unsealed, silverish, unsheathed. That's the sheath itself. Um, the weapon is currently sheathed. Do you okay. grab it? Do you yeah, open I remove it? Yeah, I remove it from the goblin's belt. Uh, you feel a it's slight pretty, chill so race one. down through your spine as you draw the weapon. Yeah, fuck it, yellow. Um, okay. Yeah. I admire that is not, that is like a cursed weapon. A cursed magic item is the farthest thought from This is the first, quite possibly the first magic item my character's ever encountered. I'm not even thinking about chills down my spine. All right, uh, you get a chill down your spine as you draw this weapon. Um, and as you pull it out, a slight ripple of flame appears down the handle. I I'm, I pause from my stokedness for a second or two to look over to um, Loud Ron to see if he's unbound his friends yet. He is stealing his friends. <laughs> You killed both the goblins. They're actually technically your rightful property. <laughs> and he's setting them free. What? Without okay. your permission. How dare he? No, I'm... Uh, Loud Run, you ready to go? Are they Are they talking? Are his friends talking yet? Uh, yeah, he ungags them. All right. I hold the sword in my hand and the quarterstaff in the other. Um, okay. I sort of tuck the sheath into my belt. Okay. I'll get it tied down later. All right. Come, friends of Loud Run. Take, take, take blades. We must flee. My accent is totally switched, which is fine. Which is fine. My character's smart enough to change his accent when he wants to, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. And we, I'm getting the fuck out. I'm running back up. The, I got, I got a, I got a, either a magical or a very, very nice looking sword. Um, that will probably sell for a lot of money, and I'm I'm GTFOing before any more goblins show up. Okay, you GTFO. Um, I assume that Loudrun has his friends, and I hope he brings my lantern back to me. But I'm they all come in tow behind you guys and use Loudrun to shine the light. Although honestly, he could be shining it a little bit better. He's kind of like, you know, he he doesn't seem to be making an effort to give you any light. Which is kind of inconsiderate since you just saved his friends, but he's doing it anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm mostly admiring my my new blade. Okay, you get out to the top, um, the surface area, and see the sun sunlight and the warm air. And you get the chill out of your body, uh, but you still have your short sword in hand. And pretty soon, the three of them come over to covet and admire your blade. <clears throat> uh, my lantern, please. He hands it back to you very quickly. And goes, uh, can I sheathe my blade? I try and sheathe it. Yeah, you sheathe it. It goes. And I let go of it. Yeah, no problem. All right, all right. And I start fastening my lantern back to the end of my staff. Okay. They they ask to see the sword again. They want to hold it. Uh, you. Uh, yeah, yeah. One of them goes not... to grab it from your sheath. <laughs> um, I dodge. I guess he has to roll the hit. Again. No, I mean you. You can easily keep him from doing it. It's not like a. You know, grabbing, grabbing. It's more of like, a, ooh, okay. I'm just gonna take that. Do you recall off the top of your head what a short sword weighs from your recent two pounds? All right. I think I'm technically encumbered, but it's fine. We're just walking back to town. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't let him grab the short sword. All right. So you I kind of move you, out of the way, and he you may, pulls back. You, you may touch this blade when you slay your first goblin, son. Uh, did anyone bother to grab the loot the goblin corpses? I guess. Nope. Nope. Amateurs. And I, well, we walk back to town. Okay. Uh, you just kind of head back towards the river and then walk from the river back to the bridge, which is completely gone now. And you see a wagon 
on the other <laughs> side of the bridge. The guy's just like scratching his head. <laughs> I yeah. Um, Give me a, a perception check at minus two. Minus I'm, two for being so ingrained in your sword that you're not really paying attention to anything else in the world. Sixteen. No, you okay? Yeah, the guy's just like, man, how am I gonna? Guess I can try and ford, and he yells at you. How deep is the river? <laughs> mm, how do I know how deep the river is? Does yeah. one of the guys answer? You know whatever you know. Uh, you're good. You're good, and I will keep walking. Can I get back to town easily, or no? Yeah, yeah, you can just walk back to town, no problem. Okay. Because you didn't have to cross the bridge at all. Uh, yeah. Do I, do I rec? I don't recognize the farmer as far as I know. Or no, the guy he's just some dude hauling a cart full of turnips. Don't give a shit. Yeah. Not my problem. I okay. head back to town. All right, you get back to town. Uh, whew. And I, I'll actually keep walking through town. And keep heading south. Uh, loud run with a, with a magic Marty uh, and movie. Michelle, <laughs> not Michelle, um, oh. Melissa. I'll I'll congratulate you and thank you for the the wonderful things you've done. And I I can't I can't thank you enough for saving my life. Is there anything I can do to repay you? Uh, I I take it from your appearance and general generally sad demeanor that you are poor. We are but simple farmers. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, just. Just, just pay it forward. Blow up a bridge, in my name, and I what? and I walk what, away. What is your name, at least? Oh, epic hero, savior of the little folk. Oh, just, just, just stop! You're making, oh, you're making me sick. But uh, uh, who shall I say has saved us? I try and leave unless they like actually actively chase me. No, the they don't. They just kind of stand in the street, letting you walk away, uh, shouting out for your name. For those in chat that missed it, I accidentally named gave two characters this the same name. Yeah. Um, well, whatever. Shit happens, bro. So we'll see. I'm I'm not too stoked on my name, but I'm playing a pow a a powerful wizard, or <laughs> powerful. One will be one day. <laughs> okay. I can make it my own name anytime I want. Yeah. Go ahead. Change your name. No one else seems to know it. So it's it's probably a lot later than I planned on leaving, but I've got this really shiny blade at at my belt now you do you I'll are not proficient with it and you are a wizard so you strike at minus five to hit with it <laughs> but it's very pretty it is pretty it has uh, now in the sunlight you can see that it has a silver sheath and the blade is steel with a mm. gold cross guard and a, a ruby pommel and by a ruby pommel, I literally mean there's just like a ruby embedded in the pommel, like a big fucking ruby, like this big. That's pretty sweet. You're right there. you're looking at the sword in the daylight, and you're estimating its GP value at many thousands, many many thousands of GP. I um, hide it in my alligator skin, uh, like belt or pouch. Does it fit backpack? in my backpack? Yeah, my there backpack. we go. Um, it will stick in the backpack, my but like. Satchel. Something Satchel's is going to have to stick out a little bit. You can have the the end the the pointy end the, sticking out. Yeah, even if it's metal, it's fine. Okay. Wow, that's 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 how you get robbed right there. Yeah. That's how you get robbed. Oh, you never did take Cookie with you, did you? No, I assumed she would find me and follow me, but I'll see her when I get back yeah. down. All right. Uh, you continue on to Guildhelm, I believe, is the name of the next town. We already just did a, a campaign where with where you get my. 17 hotness attractive female bard yeah you don't need a repeat of that no and this was beautiful woman but other than that she was nothing like michelle <laughs> like nothing like michelle it's almost like she was designed to be the opposite of michelle so do we reach uh linvort or Gil guildhelm guildhelm uh you do not get to gilmhelm Gim gilmheld uh before the sun goes down you get part way but the sun sets and you're out in the plains by yourself in the darkness. Yeah, I'll wander a little ways off road and start a fire. Okay. I got a proficiency if you'd like me to roll any checks, but I assume I can make camp. Uh, you Actually, got flint and steel, and it's a nice dry area. Yeah, I'm, I'm no problem. Yeah. 
Not easy, to mention easy. you have a flaming sword. It sets fire. It, it's literally on fire when you I said there were there were flames going down the edge of the sword. I thought that was like metaphorical. No, no, literal were, like, flames carvings. going down the edge of the sword. Literal flames going down the edge of my sword. Yes. What the fuck am I gonna do with this thing? Oh my goodness. All right. Oh, wow. okay. So yeah, I start a fire. No problem. Okay. You you start a fire, no problem, and uh, it's nice and toasty. And you curl up to go to sleep, and we roll for random encounters. Yeah, and I sleep on my book, and I cuddle my my flaming sword. And I hope that a wolf doesn't eat me in the night. Give me a perception check. That means that a wolf came and ate me in the night. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, not so good. Not so good. Okay. 19, 18, 18. Uh, you are awakened when you feel something sliding out of your hands in the middle of the night, and you kind of wake up. I and... unsheathe my sword. You you reach for your sword, and it's gone. I can't unsheathe it as it's as it's going. No, like you kind of wake up as like it's leaving your hands. By the time you come to to grab it, it's 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 out of reach. Um, I guess I roll initiative and get to get to my quarter staff. Is there yeah. still light? Uh, I... No, it's pretty dark right now. Um, roll initiative. You can only see by the. Actually, you can't even see by the starlight because it's winter and there are no stars out in winter during the in the in the world of Solemn. There are no stars in winter. God, I roll an eleven. Um. Okay. The the person who knock your sword out, draws it from its sheath, and the edge lights up with fire, and you see the face of the person, and it is Marty. Fucking he has Marty. your sword. He was the one that I say, I, he was the one that was tied up, right? Yeah, he was. Alright, um, so does he go before 11? I assume so. Uh, yeah, he goes before 11, but he just holds out the sword and looks at it and goes, <laughs> can, I start, uh, can I start casting a spell uh, before... Sort before, like, I guess it's not my turn. So whatever. You go initiative. on your initiative, yeah. So it's your turn now. And then I take a little extra time and I cast a spell. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna cast uh, grease. Uh, but uh, no, sorry, Nahal's reckless dreamer as a grease. Okay. So I roll a d100 level. No, no. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Eighty-two. So let's look at our wild surge table. Rust monster appears in front of target. What the no? Hey, what? No, stop! Not okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, and we all roll initiative for the next round. Good lord. That. That. I don't even. I don't even know. All right, D10 plus. Guaranteed entertainment. 11, once again. Okay. Goodbye, um, Magic Sword. Goodbye, Ticket to Riches. Oh, God, you keep rolling really terribly here. Okay, so Marty Thank goes you, first. I, I don't have any metal on me, aside from a few small blades that are tucked away. Marty goes first, gives a shriek, and swings the magic sword at the rust monster, rolling a natural one, <laughs> and then failing his death saving throw. Uh, he slips on some loose gravel and falls on his back, uh, the magic sword clattering to the ground out of Marty's hand. Uh, you roll 11. You are tied with the rust monster who makes its leap at Marty. Uh, I make a leap at the magic sword and try and GTFO. Try and run as fast as I can. Just running. I, I guess people probably get attacked. Oh. I don't think rust monsters make attacks of opportunity, but we'll see. The rust monster leaps on top of Marty, and you notice that it, it had to immediately start battering. Oh, by the way, for those of you that don't know what a rust monster looks like, Oh, Come the glare on. is real. Glare, it's glare. like a giant insect with tentacles that melt iron. Yeah. And probably, I think... Not tentacles, they're antenna. 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 
the antenna beat uh, along the top of Marty, and you notice the studded leather armor he has has the little studs of it start to like rust and decay, and the rust monster lets out a shrill, not a shrill, um, a, a soft buzz like a. Mm. Yeah, so I'm going simultaneously. I'm going to go pick up the... Is it still glowing when it's not in someone's hand? No, as it left his hand and fell to the grass, it went out, but it did start a small fire in the grass. Okay, so I go to the fire and I uh, pick up the flaming... Or pick up the sword from the handle. The sheath is still back. Um, the sheath is in my belt. Or... No, he grabbed both of them together. Oh, wait, you were literally sleeping holding the blade without a sheath? No, I was leaving holding the sheath. So the sheath was in my is probably in my offhand at this point. No, no, like he the, you, he took the blade and the sheath together. That's what woke you up. Okay, if so I pick know. up. Okay, so I'm gonna try and pick up both actually. If I mean I've got a full round. Uh, you would have to go back right up next to the rust monster and to next to Marty to do so, because it's in his hand, his other hand. Does the rust monster is just permanent, isn't it? It just lives here now. <laughs> Um, yeah. What would I have to roll if I want to get... Can I get both in one round? Is that not possible? Uh, you can, but that just means that you get close enough to the rust monster to attract its attention, and it may pay attention to you, it may not. It's your call. But right now, it's very focused on Marty. Yeah, I'm going to go for... I'm, I mean, we're going at the same time, so I'm going to hope... I, so I pick up the sword. I've got the sword in my mm -hmm. hand, mm -hmm. and it's, does it start burning fire? Yes. I try and find its sheath, and I run as I do so. You, using the you easily torch. grab the sheath out of Marty's hand and bolt. Um, um, I hope the rust monster doesn't get... I don't know. We'll see. Does roll it, initiative. Does it bite at me as I run past it? It does not. Um, I guess three for medium-sized creature. Seven. Okay, the rust monster bounds after you. Um, move. So he makes a half move up to you. And what are you wearing in terms of armor? You have no armor. Nada. I'm just wearing cloth clothing. So your only the, metal items only are... only metal is the... I've got a sheath, right, for the mm -hmm. sword? So I probably was I... I'm not, like, cursed or anything. I can just sheath it if I want to. Yeah. So it's getting light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've just got the sword. Probably, I'm. Yeah, maybe I'm using it to shed light. I've got the sword and the sheath in my hand. Oh no, I've got. What happened to you? So you left too. your staff then? Because you don't have three I hands. I guess so. Yeah, I definitely left my staff. Okay. And probably most of my belongings, to be honest, huh? Yeah. I don't know what would have been. Uh, most of it would have been tied to me in the night, but my satchel's behind me. Yeah. The, so the I've rust got the sword and the sheath. Uh, okay. There's a yeah. He a makes nice a, a pounce action. on you to try and knock you to the ground. Uh, make me an opposed strength check. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of metal on me. It's basically just the just the sword and a knife. Uh, my strength is not that great. Sixteen. He pounces on your back and knocks you to the ground. Um. um okay. Um, I go. So does he do dam? Does he like uh, no damage? It just stops your movement, and you are now knocked down. All right. On my turn, I'm going to try and unsheathe my knife and toss it in his general direction and stand up if I can, keeping the sword sheathed in its sheath, I guess, which is also metal. All right. So you slam the sword shut together, grab well, your knife. Is, oh, yeah, yeah, the sword. The sword yeah, was open because you left your staff yeah. and your backpack behind. So that's going to be most of my turn. Is sheathing the sword. Trying yeah, to feed the knife to the rust monster. Here, 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 take it, take it, and you toss it up, and the rust monster like looks up towards it, and it, this knife clatters to the ground nearby, and it moves over and immediately starts to munch on it. Um, and I'm you, trying to run just with this sword. <laughs> okay, you get up and you run. Uh, the rust monster spends his whole turn munching on the metal, and you roll whole, initiative. Okay, whole round. Uh, you get a, yeah. I mean, you get a half move. I'm going to say. All right, I get away from it. Uh, I'm going to actually run back to the camp. Okay. And re unsheathe my sword as I'm running. Okay. Uh, give me an initiative, please. Uh, fuck! Are you kidding me? I you can't guys are tied. With these initiatives. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, his last turn was an attack on me. So his whole this turn is eating the knife. You're right. You're right. He spends this entire so turn. So I get a knife. turn to run back to my stuff. 
and gather everything. Yeah, you gather. You grab your backpack, sling it over your shoulder, grab your staff. So I'm going to roll initiative again. Do yeah, you have a bedroll? You're not rolling up a bedroll. I never had a bedroll, no. Yeah. I was just sort of shivering on the on So the you ground. grab that stuff. Are and you, you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So, okay, so at the end well, of hold the... Well, hold on. The, your last turn, it doesn't take much to grab a backpack and grab a staff. Like, that takes yeah. two seconds. So you travel 30 feet back to the camp. Not 30 feet. I guess you did, you did take a full half move from away from the camp. So you mm -hmm. half move to the camp, gather your gear, and then what do you do with the rest of your move? Uh, towards the path south. So I'm going to, yeah, try and run south. So... Um... Uh, yeah. Okay, so then you you just kind of like no stars, right? There's no stars, right? There's no stars. So if I'm pretty, I'm pretty smart. I may recognize a hill or a stump or something. Well, it's really and head, dark. Try and head south from there, but if I don't, I may just get lost. And you you can tell where way. south is because you set up your camp and you knew which way was which when you set up your camp and where you were sleeping in relation to the okay. fire. That's not so a problem. I'm south. I'm but you can't south see here. anything else. All right. And I'm if I can increase my speed, I'm like I'm jogging. Okay. I'm out of here. All right, um, you run and you keep running and you keep running and the rust monster doesn't seem to be catching up to you and eventually you are on the road by yourself. Yeah, uh, my con is only 11, so I probably don't run that far. Yeah. Um, and I eventually make up at the road and I, I'm tired, but I travel through the night to get to Gilmheld. Okay. You arrive at Gilmheld the, uh, Gilm the next day. And I immediately go for the, the first inn that I see. Okay, you arrive at the Giant's Toe, uh, your standard everyday sort of tavern slash inn. The, uh, the proprietor is serving breakfast as you stumble in, bleary-eyed and exhausted. Hmm. A bed, I shout, and food. <laughs> and I stagger over to an empty table or a, or a seat at the bar. Holds up his hands to say six silver. Um, yeah, I hand him, I count out six silver and shovel down some food before taking a rest in the middle of the day. Okay, you nap. Um, here we go. Now it starts. Uh, oh Wild mages are exhausting. But that's why we <laughs> picked them, right? So, uh, the next, later that night, I guess, or later that afternoon, you I probably wake up. wake up like, yeah, in the, as after, it's winter, right? Mm -hmm. So probably like as, as the sun's setting. Mm -hmm. uh, what spell am I going to memorize? Let's see. Here. Spells. Oh, it's always Nahal's Reckless Dweamer, at least at this point. Good man. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Change Self again. Okay. Um, anything else you want to do, or you just continue on to Elmsteed? It's about a two-day journey from here, the it proprietor tells you. Day and a half by foot, really. Yeah, how do most folk get there safely? Uh, they go in groups, they hitch a wagon, uh, you know, maybe go with someone that has a weapon or two. The yeah, Hornwood is usually not that dangerous, so it's you know, a lot of some people make the journey and just risk it, but occasionally something comes out of there or something comes out of the plains. You know. All right. Um, I'm actually gonna. I'll, I I I'm gonna leave right now. I'm. Just, it's like late after. It's evening. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna plan on traveling through the night and all of the next day and just not sleeping until I get to Elmstead. All right. Give me a con check. And I'm just going to go for it. You know what, screw it. Anyone can go for a day and a half without sleep. That's not hard at all. I do that. I'll roll, I can roll a con basis. check to see if it's like... Sure, give me a con check. I don't know. To see how well I take it, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah you do really well. Ooh, I like your new hobgoblin icon. Just seeing it now for the first time. Oh, I drew it myself. You did? It's pretty mm -hmm. sweet. It's not actually new. It's quite old. Okay. I can't even see it. It's actually spinning for me. Well, I can see it where I'm rolling anyways. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you journey through the night, uh, which is very, very uneventful, and then all through the next day, and you pass all manner of traveler. Uh, you get into the forest sometime around sunup, really. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and proceed through there. You keep coming across various shrines to different beasts. Uh, there's a shrine to a bear, the shrine to a horse, one to a badger, one to a unicorn, another one to a unicorn, uh, a shrine to the shrew, to a, some sort of bird, another one to a unicorn, uh, a shrine to a couple of elves, it looks like, or a party of pointy-eared people that are slender. I've surely heard all these... tell of the unicorn of Hornwood. Right, that's like a yeah. local, that's like a legend that I heard growing up, right? Yes, yes, that Hornwood is thusly named for the unicorn or unicorns that dwell within. Uh, they are rarely seen and often spoken of. Because because crazy wizards like Fenric like to kill them and drink their blood. Pretty much. <laughs> um, in any case, I'm now in the forest, traveling yep. along. If you don't stop at any of these shrines, there's plenty of other people walking your way if you want to I'm ask anyone anything. I'm shrines, but I'm not okay. superstition, you know. I, you I'm eventually not. arrive at the capital of this region, Elmstead. Mm -hmm. Alright. Sorry about that. Um, does, does mommy say it's time to go to bed? No, 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 no. Just people are over and they're wondering if. Um, never mind. Doesn't matter. Un there's unrelated. A, there's a party going on at your house and you're hiding out in your room. Actually, there's a party going on during misclicks. The party has since died down. Oh. <laughs> it was actually difficult Priorities. to hear some of the misclicks because of the 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 sweet bumps being. The sweet bumps? What kind of party is? I don't know. On? I was trying to say the the, the nice music, but I, I can't I can't slang. I, I don't know if thieves can't. I can't slang. I, I don't know if thieves can't, guys. So good music to me is apparently sweet bumps. The pound and beats. There we go. Something like that. Something like that. Not quite that. Anyway, um, you eventually el end up in Elmstead. Yeah. Um, you are uh, pretty general... wiped. You've been walking yeah. for like two days. Uh, it was more like a day and a half, but yeah. Yeah, but then you you slept, and then you had walked for a day and a half before that, but you only got like three hours of sleep. Yeah, so, my so I'm trying to it's... find an inn, and then my general plan is to find a bookseller, try and find this, try and pawn, pawn this book, and then investigate the short sword that I didn't really plan on stumbling upon, but came. Well, let's take it step by step. So first step get, is, pro tip: get your DM a little bit drunk, play D and D with him late at night. You may just get a cool short sword that's that's on fire. Yeah. You, you know what? Just, Accidents happen. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you mean to say you come across a normal sword and it comes out a fire sword, and then it's been said and you can't take it back. And then all of a sudden, everyone's reincarnated as a gold dragon, and and you gotta live with it. Yeah. Nope. Yep. We're all just dragons and Trents and. Why don't uh, okay? Bayer. I've got a suggestion. Why don't we take an early break, um, and okay, drink some water, and we'll come back to Elmstead in a few minutes. All right. We'll see you guys in a bit. Or Neil gets drunk and hands me a ring of three wishes. Hey, don't push me. It might happen. Take a few minutes to sober up. This, sh this shit's canon. We'll see you guys on the other see you guys side. On the other side. <laughs>